Arwa Damon. She's the president and founder of Inara, which is a non-profit organization that provides access to life-altering medical and mental health care to children impacted by human-induced or natural disasters. Great to have you back with us, Arwa. Let's start with uh, this latest raid on Al-Shifa Hospital. Of course, it is Gaza's largest medical facility, and health authorities there say some 30,000 displaced people, patients and medical staff are sheltering at the complex. What's your reaction to what we're seeing unfold there right now? First of all, it's not entirely surprising that the Israelis would launch yet again another raid on a medical facility. What we have been seeing since the onset of all of this is the systematic targeting of Gaza's medical infrastructure as just one of the many ways that Israel continues to try to put pressure on the population. And this has been Israel's strategy from the get-go, whether it's what we're currently seeing right now, or even uh, previous uh, attacks and assaults on the Gaza Strip to try to pressure the population from many different access points, medical, food, humanitarian, with the sort of backwards thinking that somehow the population is going to rise up and take on Hamas uh, on their own. This is not a strategy that has worked in the past, and this is not a strategy that is working right now. What is, however, perhaps slightly different uh, in terms of this raid that we're seeing on El Shifa uh, still unfolding at the moment, is that Israel appears to have informed the hospital staff and uh, patients that they do not necessarily need to evacuate. Now, is this perhaps because of pressure that Israel has been uh, increasingly coming under from some of its biggest backers, including the United States? That still remains uh, to be seen. But there is something of a slight change uh, in rhetoric, at the very least, that we're hearing from Israeli officials speaking about this raid in particular. Uh, of course, it is absolutely devastating uh, when it comes to the impact that it is going to have on El Shifa, which is effectively crippled uh, at the moment and, and functioning at the barest of, of bare minimums. Meantime, Arwa, UNICEF, the UN Children's Fund, has highlighted the fact that more than 13,000 children have been killed since October 7th. It's also warning that an untold number of children face malnourishment and starvation. As someone who heads up an organization that deals with children in conflict zones, how could you possibly even begin to address the needs of children in Gaza right now, given the fact that Israel is essentially blocking aid supplies into the enclave uh, and uh, the people there are, are relying on a trickle of aid convoys coming in through Rafa, but also through uh, a limited number of airdrops? The short answer to that is you can't. You cannot address the needs of the population of Gaza as a humanitarian organization under the circumstances and conditions that exist today. And for anyone who is working in the humanitarian sector, who is seeing the sheer level of unprecedented need and desperation, it is absolutely gutting because the resources are there. You have a number of massive international aid organizations, plus organizations uh, like mine, Inara, that have the resources that are ready to potentially respond. What we don't have is the access. And if we tie this back to that conversation uh, of attacks on medical facilities and how the medical infrastructure of Gaza is basically non-existent right now, you have this ripple out of effect when you have the decimation of a medical infrastructure coupled with the inability of humanitarian organizations to function even at a minimal capacity. And this results in, as we have been seeing, a growing number of deaths from malnutrition, growing number of, of cases of diarrhea among children, which I'll remind everybody, in children under the age of five, diarrhea is the number one killer. You have something of around 100% of injuries that are infected. And by infections, this is leading to extraordinarily painful cleaning procedures that are being done without anesthesia. In some cases, and I'll excuse the audience for this graphic description, uh, wounds 
having maggots growing out of them. You have growing cases of communicable uh, diseases. All of this is absolutely devastating under normal circumstances, not to mention one's like the population of Gaza is facing right now. And if we look at these different mechanisms that are being floated right now in terms of access of aid with the airdrops and these possible sea routes uh, being explored, on the one hand, you know, yes, is that an alternative? On the other hand, is it a viable alternative? No, absolutely not. What Gaza needs right now is for it to be flooded with aid. And that can only happen if more land routes are opened up direct lands routes to the north and to central Gaza, and all of these absurd restrictions on access of humanitarian assistance are lifted by Israel. Okay, Arwa Damon, we will have to leave it there for now, but best of luck with your work, and thank you as always for joining us.